that's working, all right? We're going to start parasitology, and um, I'll tell you now, and I'll ask Dr. Mayer probably to send a general email. If I don't cover the very last lecture or parts of it, the, you've got the handout that will give you all the information that you will be needing, and uh, it's just the extra explanation would not be there, but I'll also ask, see if I cannot put something on the web so that you can access, you know, uh, sound bites as well, okay? Um, I don't think I'll be able to cover the last lecture in it, that just time is limited, okay? So we're going to talk about parasites, and you will re recognize some of the names that are weird, that they have never heard of it, some of the diseases you have never heard of it. Uh, but that, uh, you know, having uh, said that, I, yes? Do we have a handout for the bioterrorism? You, yes, no, no, there's no handout for bioterrorism, just, you know, what I, you know, covered in the class and the, the notes. And the, I think the, he's got the sign by Jack. You, you recorded that. Sorry? You're not going to share that. Good idea. If they were here, they would not have missed it, right? <laughs> it's not my idea, okay? Uh, he wants to sell those. <laughs> and in return, he's going to give me a Clemson, Carolina ticket. <laughs> okay. Um, I won't be in the country. By the way, I am not going to be in the country after the 16th or 15th, or, you know, even the last Friday. The, this coming Friday would be last day I'll be here. But my email will remain the same, so if you've got any problems or questions, send me an email, okay, and I'll be happy to answer. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, in the email, uh, just put down MBIM650 on the subject because I get so much junk that I delete anything that I don't recognize. MBIM650 in the subject uh, heading, uh, subject in a place, so that I recognize what it is and I wouldn't um, consider junk because all your names, I don't have it up here who is in the class, so if it is just a name, I won't be able to recognize from the name. Okay? All right. So we're going to talk about some weird parasites and that you have, are unfamiliar to you. Uh, some of the diseases you may not even see. But what we were not seeing 10 years ago, we are seeing those here. Because of our troops being abroad, there is a lot of uh, traveling uh, involved. Uh, troops come back and forth, okay? Uh, medical, you know, the staff goes back and forth as well. So the, lots of diseases that were uncommon are becoming more and more common now. Um, but I have, again, you know, the way uh, uh, the, the parasitic diseases have not received much attention because for a, large, uh, for a number of reasons, prevalence in developing countries and lower in socioeconomic population, and we don't see those diseases as they see in developing countries. Um, low mortality and morbidity in some of them. Some of them are very high morbidity. Uh, and certainly some, uh, a good degree of uh, mortality as well. Limited um, drug developments. You will notice from the lectures that there are only five different drugs. Five or at the very most uh, six different drugs that are used for different parasitic infections. And you will see, and they will pr probably be in bunches uh, that you will see those drugs. Um, there, is no, there are no vaccines for any of the parasitic infections that can be used. Um, there is some effort to, to develop malarial vaccine, but there is not one, and Leishmanial vaccine as well, perhaps, but there is not one in, uh, that has been approved either in this country or any place else. They're all in the, under either development, experimental models, or clinical trials. So that's the reason that you don't hear of those. Uh, in South Carolina, it is an old study that um, was published in those years. And uh, again, there's not much research, so there's no new data. You'll see some uh, roundworms uh, in South Carolina. Good number of them. These are fairly significant numbers. Hookworms, you're going to see. Uh, one or two cases have been seen at, VA, at the VA hospital. So it is within the country and more so in the southwest, I'm sorry, southeast than um, any other parts of the country. Uh, trichuriasis, you can see that, and we'll talk about those diseases. Giardiasis, 
I usually get one or two people in the class uh, that uh, have had giardiasis. Okay, so uh, that's not uncommon either. And this is particularly very common among the um, HIV infected patients. Um, interestingly, every year, third year students or fourth year students, if I see them in the hallway, they say, oh, Dr. Farr, I saw a case of giardiasis that came in. Okay, so you are going to, you're very likely to see those. And Tamiba, not as common as the others, but there are cases of those. And if uh, people are traveling abroad, they are very likely to um, experience infections with those. Um, if one looks at the universal um, incidence, there's a very high um, uh, ME um, rate. Um, it should not be coli, by the way. I'll correct it. It is a Entamoeba histolytica. Okay? So if you want to correct on yours, if you've downloaded, I already correct that. It is histolytica. Okay? Giardia. Sorry? That one there. Instead of coli, it should be histolytica. Um, just um, oversight on my part. Okay? Ballantidium coli, that's probably where... That, uh, I was thinking about when I put the, by mistake, coli. Uh, it's a significant number of cases worldwide, and most of them are in the developing countries where the poor hygiene, poor socioeconomic conditions, poor uh, water um, treatment, poor um, um, sewage uh, disposal, um, and so they are uh, very prevalent in those places. Um, GIDS is not just limited to those. Um, cryptosporidium, diarrhea, it has become more and more common among the HIV in, uh, patients. Uh, Astrospora, again, opportunistic, and it is seen in HIV-infected patients. Trichomonas vaginale, very, very common. It's a sexually transmitted disease. So those are the protozoan diseases that are, you know, we're going to talk about. Um, the way I have organized the handout as well as presentation, we talked about the organisms a little bit, morphology, geographic distribution, and it is very important. I keep on emphasizing where the person has been or where the person has come from or where the person has immigrated from. So it is important consideration, and therefore you should know what are the areas that are geog have that geographic distribution? I mean, to give you an example, if you have never been to South Central, I mean, Central Africa, uh, um, you are not at risk of sleeping sickness, a disease that we'll talk about. So that's just an example. You can exclude certain things or include certain things based on the history of where the person has been. We'll talk about life cycle. And that is also, that tells you what the mode of transmission is and if there are vectors or reservoirs for those. Um, symptoms, of course, in order to diagnose and come up with the, what organism is causing those symptoms, you've got to know, associate or know that. Pathogenesis and uh, immunity, we'll talk about that. Um, diagnosis and treatment and prevention of these diseases. Um, since there are only five diseases and there are none new ones coming up, there's not much on the horizon, do uh, study and know the treatments as well. Okay? So, um, there are only five drugs and they are just, uh, you know, as I said, historically, they have not changed. Um, amebiasis means uh, infection with amoeba. Um, um, etiologic agent is Entamoeba histolytica, and that has been a uh, disease, amoebic dysentery. Uh, but in addition, in chronic cases, there are liver, lung, and brain abscesses, and there may be some other areas of the body, anatomical sites of the body, that abscesses may uh, be um, seen, depend on where the organism has migrated, which, which tissue or organ. Here is a case scenario again. Um, is the, 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 if you think that I should turn on after lights to projection mode, just let me know, okay? 
All right, if it is not uh, visible to the back. Or you can just move forward. I promise you I will not throw anything if you are asleep. Okay? And, you know, and if you think I can't throw that far, that's wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, a 37-year-old businessman complains of cent uh, uh, central abdominal pain, uh, diarrhea, and flatulence of 10 days duration, which started two days after returning from a trip to Central South America. No effort to malign any countries, but that's where those infections are more prevalent. His wife and children who did not travel with him have no GI complaints. He has no fever, and the physical examination is otherwise normal. The stool and mucus, it contains mucus and blood. Okay? So, um, there are two things that you should be thinking. If you remember, Dr. Fox talked about mucus and blood. Okay? Or certainly mucus. All right? Uh, in shigalosis. Okay? Mucoid dysentery. Um, no fever, unlikely bacterial infection, okay? Although there are some cases of parasitic infection, uh, GI infection, you may have low-grade fever. Um, key point is there. All right. The possible agents uh, could be entamoeba. As a matter of fact, as we go along, we'll compare different parasitic GI, parasitic infection, as to how you can differentially diagnose. Uh, histolytica morphology is um, here, amoeboid organisms, okay, and um, those are the trophozoites, means mature form, okay, and um, they, they produce cysts, and um, their cysts are around, and they have multiple, uh, no, four nuclei, four nuclei, up to four nuclei. Uh, in, in some cases, you may see a few more, and we'll talk about that. But generally, uh, you can sort of um, think about four nuclei. There's a central karyosome in both cysts, and um, and the and um, cysts and the trophozoite. Um, in the trophozoites, occasionally you may see ingested red cells. Where are they, can they be found? Where, where, where they, are they seen? They are seen either in the stool. They're, they're seen in the stool, actually. Not either, just in the stool. Okay? Because this is a GI infection. Um, life cycle is very simple. Orofecal, as one, or at, um, um, as one of our um, clinical um, uh, instructors used to say, poops to mouth. Okay? So... That may be easier for you to remember. Anyway, orofecal, okay, the infected individuals, they, in the uh, developing countries, in many countries, the to toilets may be outdoors and are outdoors, or if they're not, they're hiking or in the fields, they may uh, just relieve themselves there. And uh, that, of course, will contaminate the field and um, it can find access to water or vegetation. And in some countries, not only that, but they also use untreated sewage for fertilization or improperly treated. And I always tell a, a sort of a, a episode that I experienced, um, oh, about 15 or so years ago, I was in Pakistan just visiting, and there was also a friend, uh, you know, a colleague, a surgeon friend. He was also visiting his family, and we, decided, we used to play tennis here, so we decided to go and play tennis in Pakistan. Oh, July, it was July or August. It's impossible to live there in July and August, certainly outdoors. It's hot and humid, and... Um, so, so I, we lasted only about one set, and then we decided we'll quit. Went to the little shack there, and we said, could we have a drink? Sorry, we are not open. Do you have any water? No, they don't have any water. So we came out of there, and there was a gardener, you know, watering the beautiful lawn. And we said, well, can we have a drink from that? No, you cannot have a drink from that. Can we wash our hands or face, cool off? No. Why? Because it was not a treated water. Okay, so 
there, that's not uncommon in many countries to use um, untreated um, uh, water for, uh, for irrigation. Um, and um, even the city water is often not safe. For the last, what, the two, uh, nearly two years, I've been using boiled water for drinking or uh, filtered, three-stage filtered water. So the city water is not trusted either. Okay, so orofecal is the um, mode of transmission. Okay, uh, once it enters the body uh, as a cyst, okay, most of the time cysts are infective. The, the carisomes, the, not caris the nuclei, four nuclei divide into um, uh, eight nuclei, and then they start dividing, and those um, uh, dividing cells with a single nucleus, they uh, transform into trophozoites, and the trophozoites are the ones that cause problem in the, uh, they attach themselves to the uh, mucosa, intestinal mucosa, and sometimes they even might um, invade the tissue and lodge into different organs, thereby producing cysts. Okay, and then they will also uh, turn into cysts, and those cysts um, uh, will divide their um, uh, nucleus and become four nucleated cells cells with four nuclei, cysts with four nuclei, and they're extruded in the uh, cystool, and that's the infective form of the organism. So the infective form of the organism is cyst. Um, small and large intestine uh, is uh, uh, normally involved, and there it will produce abdominal pain, frequent bloody dysentery, and bloody uh, uh, is underlined. Um, sort of emphasized because there is often blood in these uh, tissues, uh, in these stools, and they, it will al may also and often does contain a necrotic mucosa because of the destruction to the uh, gut epithelial cells or gut mucosal cells, mucosal cells. Okay, the other organs that are involved is, um, oh, that's just a, okay. The symptoms, of course, they will be the same thing. That's a repeat of that uh, for some reason, in liver, if they invade the tissue and end up in the liver through circulation, um, they would cause um, cysts, abscesses, and, of course, inflammation of liver. In lung, again, they will cause abscess and pneumonia. The, in brain, abscess and encephalitis. So those are just straightforward. Wherever they are, they are going to cause um, abscesses, and because of the presence of foreign body and uh, an organism, there will be inflammation, which will result in hepatitis in liver, uh, pneumonia in lung, or encephalitis in the brain. Uh, pathology of the organism is invasiveness and abscess formation. Though both of them are due to amoebic proteolytic enzymes. And there are some, uh, some um, varieties of uh, amoeba histolytica that are much less virulent than the others. And virulence is usually, the degree of virulence is usually correlates with the size. The larger ones are more virulent and production of uh, the uh, proteolytic enzyme. That's what digests the tissue and causes abscesses. Immunology, antibiotics are detectable in um, chronic infections, but they are of questionable value as protective, uh, as protective um, um, antibody, protective immune response. They are not really prot uh, very protective. Antibiotics is different from GRDSs as a differential diagnosis and bacterial dysentery. They are, there's mucus, and blood in the stool, and there are no uh, or granular size to mention of in the found in the stool, uh, and no granular cytosis in the circulation either, and no high-grade fever. There may be low-grade fever, 
Those two are characteristic of bacterial dysentery, which is shigellosis. Okay, uh, diagnostic features are, um, I've already mentioned to you, sort of irregular and multiple forms of it. There is a think self study or independent study schedule, um, which, you know, if it is, you have not got it on the schedule. I don't remember if it is or not there. Dr. Mayer will probably send you an email. You can go over it's a self-study, but it is part of the independent study. And you can go through the laboratory exercise and see different organisms in their different diagnostic forms. You can look for it and send an email to him. It's, it's automatic test. You know, you take a little quiz and it goes to him as a results, part of the results. Um, that would be very, very helpful for your test within this course and outside this course. Because most of the time, these diagnostic pictures, they come up with a test, okay? Case scenario, and given this one as a, what is the organism or some other question, okay? So it will be very helpful for you to go through that exercise, not only just to complete your com independent exercise portion of the course, but also for the exam. These ex questions for this uh, part of the course will be included in virology section. Okay? Um, one has to be careful. There are lots of amoebae that can be found in the... Uh, in the uh, in the stool, I will not hold you responsible for um, remembering all the characteristic features of these organisms. They are morphologically uh, uh, different in terms of their number of nuclei in the, uh, uh, or the size or um, position of the karyosome. But if you remember the but you should remember the organisms that are not pathogenic and uh, they are part of the differential diagnosis. Uh, because the lab itself would identify that. A few years ago, there was a, I got a call from Richland, you know, a physician, and they had a immigrant Russian child, and they got the report, they, they were sent a report from the lab, one of these organisms, I think it was um, um, and I remember Bushley I. Okay, and they said, well, there's, uh, should one worry about it or treat them? No. Okay, that was a normal commensal um, organism. Okay, uh, so you, they, they, I've already said that, how they are distinguished. Okay, um, prevention and treatment are um, better hygiene efficient sewage treatment, and proper disposal. And treatment, iodoquinol or metronidazole. Those are the two uh, choices. I have excluded some of the pictures from it just to save some time. And um, I made, if I have saved some time towards the end, I will you know, go through that I may not have time. Giardiasis, etiologic agent is Giardia lamblia, sometimes referred to as old man Giardia. You will see why. Disease, diarrhea, lipid, and vitamin B12, um, um, and other nutrient malabsorption. Okay? Those are the, um, and in turn, of course, they will create the symptoms depending on how depleted those uh, components are in the patient, depending on how, okay? It's slight change from the old one, version of business complaint of um, central abdominal pain, diarrhea, and flatulence, 10 days, uh, um, which started, to, to started the day after returning from a trip to Leningrad. Leningrad had to have a very bad reputation 
for geodesis, but that is not the only place. You can go to Colorado or Montana, and uh, if you are in the wrong place and you do the wrong thing, you may come back with geodesis. Okay? So, uh, Leningrad, although Leningrad was particularly famous at one stage, I don't know, after the, um, the revolution or after the changes in Soviet Union, how bad it is. Okay, his wife and children who did not travel again, did not have the complaints. He has no fever and physical examination as otherwise normal. Milk consumption makes the symptoms worse, so lactose intolerance is associated with this infection. Uh, the stool is bulky, bulky, foul smelling, and floating on the water surface. In other words, uh, low, very low density. And those are characteristic features that should make you think of not amoebiasis, but giardiasis. Most importantly, no mucus, no blood. Okay? And the, the texture of the stool, uh, texture, another texture, another characteristics of stool should make you think. Uh, what is the uh, prevalence? Children are very prone to getting it, and this is not uh, from overseas. This is um, from the country from the U.S., these numbers, um, okay, uh, it's not reportable in either South Carolina or North Carolina, so you don't see much data. Not strictly reportable, but the, the, there's also, the physicians sometimes do, do, do report those. Or these specimens may go to DHEC for analysis, and they have a sort of underestimate of these incidents. Um, children, and then between 6 and around 20, um, there's a lower incidence. If it starts going up between 21 uh, or 25 and 40, people are more active, and they are hikers and, you know, outdoors people uh, within that age, and then it starts going down. And as I said, mentioned to you, this, this is from the MMWR report, you know, uh, in 2000. Um, there no reason to believe that uh, it has changed. Um, as people are more sort of indoors and so forth, it just goes down, unless there's HIV, super, you know, uh, as, a, um, uh, as an infection and Im immunosuppression um, as a result of. 11, about 11,000 cases have already been reported uh, this year, and there were about 65 in South Carolina. Okay, so they, they, it is often seen. And again, those numbers are not real numbers. They are gross underestimate because no, there is of no legal requirement for reporting. Uh, morphologically, it's a pear-shaped organism, and that's the reason you, it's uh, referred to as old man giardia, sort of bald, a few strands of hair, uh, 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 glasses there, gra old granny glasses, um, the round frame, um, and um, sort of tail, uh, you know, uh, straggly beard. Okay? So you can't mistake that organism if you see it. Um, there are about eight or so, uh, eight um, uh, flagellae. In the stool examination, you may not, you will not often see flagellae. This has got to go to, you know, electron microscopy or much higher power. Okay, it also produces a cyst. Then cyst contains a lot of features of the, um, of the trophozoid. The except nuclei have multiplied, and there are four nuclei in the um, cyst, and in your practice, the lab exercise that you'll go through, um, the, uh, the both cyst and trophozoites have been um, are represented. Um, flagellate, parabasal bodies, that those uh, are also, as you can see, in uh, exostyle, sort of primitive exostyle there, okay, in both of them. So that, that's the general um, general um, Morphology. The cyst, instead of being round, is oval, egg-shaped. 
size-wise, there's some overlap with that, but the, by and large, it is smaller than, um, than uh, Antamoeba histolytica. Life cycle, same as, um, same as um, Antamoeba histolytica, orofecal. Okay, um, the difference is there are beavers and some other animals have been, wild animals have been, um, uh, shown, uh, have been uh, reported, documented as reservoirs. A typical scenario, you are hiking, you know, somewhere in the mountainous or hilly area. Montana is particularly mentioned in some of the texts, uh, but it could be in South Carolina, okay? somewhere uh, in South Carolina. There's a nice, clear water stream coming from uphill, and um, you're thirsty, and you just go down, and uh, you may wash your face as well as drink some water, because it looks very, very clean. And um, uh, the, the, however, it may contain the cysts from fecal material of reservoir animals, those carrier animals, and um, a few days later, you can come down with, um, with severe diarrhea. Okay, symptoms are, uh, it is confined to the GI tract. In the acute infection, flatulence, foul smelling, bulky uh, diarrhea, light diarrhea, low, low density, Bloating characteristic, malabsorption, lactose intolerance are the sort of symptoms, which I have already mentioned once before. Okay, in the case of chronic, small and large intestine, the same area, um, asymptomatic or um, mild to more severe symptoms, and it may be cyclic. Okay? Um, so, that, that, that the people may become uh, chronically infected with the organism. Pathology, it is not invasive. It simply covers the GI tract. Um, in the morphology, there was a suction um, area that is uh, function as a suction cup. And these organisms, they attach themselves to the um, gut mucosa, and by do it, virtue of doing that, they make the, the, the gut lining flat, okay? So the villi become, uh, you know, fewer or disappear and flattening. And that will, of course, cause not just presence of the organism, but also flattening of the lining would cause malabsorption because the surface area is reduced and also is covered with, um, um, with the organism. Okay, immunologically, some protective role for IgA and IgM has been described. Okay, and that's the reason that the HIV individuals are much more susceptible to this. Uh, increased incidence in immunodeficiencies. That's what was next. Okay, differential diagnosis. Yes, it's different from amoebic and bacterial dysentery. And the two characteristics, no mucus, no blood, or PMN in the stool, mucus and blood in the case of um, uh, amoebiasis, blood and, um, or mucus, um, and PMN uh, in the case of bacterial dysentery or diarrhea. Uh, no granulocytosis and no fever has been is common. Okay, is not is common feature. Um, again, this is the real stool instead of a drawing uh, in a representation of uh, the organisms. You can see, you, most of the time you are likely to see stool in the uh, in this uh, li likely to see cyst in the stool because the Trophozoas reside in the upper, and they are attached into the upper uh, part of the intestine. Um, there is a test, um, um, enterotest, I think it's called, 
um, it's in your handout. I, I think I've got, okay, in your handout, where one makes the person swallow a, a gelatin capsule, empty gelatin capsule, swallow it, but it is tied to the string, and after swallowing, sometimes after, one pulls it back out so that it has reached, gone beyond the stomach, and then one can pull it out, and then whatever comes with it is, uh, you know, is absorbed onto it. If one puts on the slide, one can see these as well. Okay? Very high-tech test. Just a string, okay? Okay. Uh, prevention based on better hygiene and efficient sewage treatment and efficient disposal. Those are the preventive measures. Those are the two really uh, organisms that are really most common, okay? Um, iodoquinol or metronidazole are the drugs of choice. Yes? Yes. Um, as you saw in the no, they, have, they, have, they should be treated. Okay, because antibiotics can result into chronic and abscesses. Uh, strangely, my, uh, my wife is from Denmark, and her brother was um, assigned to a job in Africa. And he came back, and he could not walk, and he had trouble walking, um, and there were some other symptoms that suggested that it, there may be an abscess. Okay? And they could not identify for the longest time. And then later on, he was treated for amoebic abscess, and his, his symptoms disappeared. So, yes, lack of treatment can lead to abscesses in different parts of the body, the, and should, so it should be treated. A mild um, GRDASIS, you know, if it's a mild case, it may go away. But most of the time, you do want to treat. Does it become chronic? Is that injury at all, or is it just an effect that... Uh, it, obviously, the more severe the infection, the longer the treatment. Okay? So, but, but they are not... I do not know of any drug resistance in either of those two. Okay? They're both treatable. Okay. The... Next uh, protozoan parasite that we'll talk about is intestinal protozoan, uh, Balantidium coli. And this is it's a zoonotic infection. And um, Cryptosporidium parvum, that's becoming more and more of a problem due to HIV. The HIV individuals are often um, uh, infected with, uh, have Cryptosporidium mediated diarrhea and very difficult to treat as well. In the normal individuals, normal population, heavier doses of infection can produce symptoms. Uh, historically, um, many, several years ago, uh, it was a report, uh, the, 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 there was a lot of rain and flooding in Wisconsin area. And uh, because of that, the sewage got contaminated, the water got contaminated, okay, and there was a large epidemic of cryptosporidial diarrhea. And um, when Dr. Brian comes, he will also emphasize, if you see in the, within a community that there is a lot of diarrhea cases, okay, a lot of diarrhea, community diarrhea, suspect cryptosporidium as an infective agent. I may have some slides to show. Often there the, the, uh, was several, one or two cases that reported that where the peep office individuals, okay, from our office, a good number of them, uh, I think it was over uh, 20 individuals working there, they came down with diarrhea, cryptosporidial diarrhea. It was self-limiting. These are normal population, okay? So, uh, but it was traced to the water bottle once the water bottle was changed, there were no new cases. And some of those cases, cryptosporidium was isolated from that. So large group of people within a, uh, in a limited environment, think of that. Um, 
I don't remember if it is true or not, if they were reported, but I have a suspicion that there were some cryptosporidial diarrhea was reported among, uh, after the um, hurricane Katrina. Okay? So uh, it is not an insignificant organism, particularly when we are thinking about uh, HIV individuals. This is also an um, uh, opportunistic infection, and you will often see in context with um, HIV-infected individuals. Uh, Benetim coli, primarily zoonotic, horses, pigs, and cows are carriers. Farm workers are at the risk. So if you see a farm worker and you see uh, the um, conditions like um, amoebiasis, diarrhea, um, they think also of, um, of um, uh, Valentidium coli. Uh, symptoms similar to amoebiasis, except that there is no invasion, okay? No invasion and no abscesses. Here's the typical uh, in a, uh, picture. It's a ciliated organism. It's a ciliated organism, and it's a lot larger, up to about three to four times larger than Entamoeba histolytica. Um, the cyst also has primitive inside the cyst. If you're lucky, you can see uh, cilia. The nucleus is sort of kidney-shaped, large, relatively large. Okay? And there are no central karyosomes in this case. It's very distinct from Entamoeba histolytica or Giardia, as you can see. Um, here is the life cycle, normally zoonotic. Here is the there's a pig, and one pig carrier or, uh, has the infection, and it will spread into the whole, um, the whole herd. And occasionally people handling, working on the farm are going to get infected, and they will have symptoms, and they will, uh, there will be cysts in their stools. Very simple life cycle. Symptoms, as I said, similar to amoebiasis, with a diarrhea with blood and mucus, except no abscesses found, and the organism is obviously very distinct from um, Entamoeba histolytica and easy to recognize. Okay, here is a sample from this two specimen, both of those. Prevention, of course, Good hygiene, avoid ingestion of material contaminated with animal feces. So washing hands is very important, uh, you know, for the wife who is uh, making the salad. <laughs> or the man, the husband who is making the salad while wife is working in the yard, in the barn. Okay, so either of them, either way, if the food can get con contaminated, um, a person is at risk or it can... Uh, acquired infection. For some reason, tetracycline I've never um, is also one of the agents can be used, but um, if you can remember the iodoquinol and metronidazole, which is for the other two, three uh, protozoan parasite, you're safe. Okay? Or you will um, help be able to help the patient. Here is the cryptosporidium incidence that I was talking about. Okay, around this time, and it's not seasonal either, nothing to do with seasonality. Uh, you know, there were a large number of cases here. All right, and uh, some were just symptomatic, others laboratory confirmation by finding cryptosporidium. And, um, and there are epidemics or limited endemics, okay? limited epidemics, I should say, really, um, are um, often reported for this organism. And this is uh, with the normal individuals. If it, it was HIV-infected individual, of course, it won't be self-resolving. Um, it will be a major nuisance. 
Animals are a reservoir for this. Uh, therefore, if the animal fecal material contaminates drinking water due to a, in a major flood, major hurricane, or, um, um, or if it contaminates the drinking water uh, in, a, um, in a water bottle fountain. Okay, this was 2005. Okay, um, there were 15 cases. Okay. Uh, all right, morphologically, this sort of um, the stains reddish, sort of uh, with um, eosinophil, uh, with with um, with HNA stain, and um, here is the cysts that are found. It, it, it does not have a really trophozoic form. It's the nuclei multiply within the cyst, multinucleated the the, the bursts and produce the um, you know, more young cryptosporidia. Uh, treatment and control is a self-limiting among the um, healthy individuals. It may be asymptomatic or symptomatic. Severity of symptoms will depend on how, uh, what the infectious uh, inf bolus of infection is. Severe and prolonged in HIV disease patients, very difficult to treat. Pyromycin is often used, but um, um, there may be other newer drugs that are, can be used, but it's very difficult to treat. Uh, proper sanitation and clean water supply are the preventive measures. I sp uh, okay, so that, that is um, cryptosporidium. I'll finish this you know, within... Uh, in the next couple of minutes. Uh, this part. Isospora belli is um, another sort of oval um, uh, protozoan parasite. It's often you would see binucleated, large nuclei, and that's also an opportunistic um, organism. Um, actually, those are not nuclei sporocysts. Those are spores. Okay. And... Um, the, it causes GRDS is like symptoms, but milder symptoms. You're not good, you don't get as blatant or as a severe flattening of the uh, gut mucosal, uh, gut epithelium, and also the symptoms are a lot milder. I do not know if you get glucose intolerance in this case as well. I have not seen at least reported that way. So that is another feature that you don't see with that. Um, diarrhea is the only um, common feature. Causes GRDS like maldiar symptoms, self-limiting in normal individuals. Again, opportunistic infection. And anything when I say opportunistic infection, you can right away think of HIV individuals that are, would be extremely susceptible to it, and it will cause major problems in those individuals. Okay? Severe, as a you know, that was, that's what I just pointed out. And in this tool, that's what you're going to find. Typical oval um, uh, uh, protozoa with one or um, two sporocysts, and that's how they divide, they, they replicate. Diagnostic stage, uh, fresh stool with one sporocyst. Treatment, TMP, trimethop. Trimethoprin, uh, sulfomethoxazole, you will see that drug again and again in terms of HIV individuals. That it will be the treatment, of course, in the HIV individuals who are not going to recover from it spontaneously. Um, this is a drug uh, used in crypto, um, no, pneumocystis pneumonia as well. well you will see it later when um, one of our clinical colleagues is going to talk about AIDS. We'll take a break. <laughs> 